I mean, honestly, he's a beast. And uh, I'm really proud of the fact that I get to stand next to him today because there isn't, you know, when, when we talk about what's just mentioned, the range of different campaigns and the different types of issues that we talk about here in Cardiff and here in Wales, Hussein is often the person leading from the front. So, Hussein, over to you. That was so nice of you, thank you. <laughs> Bit taken aback. They're all going to be very disappointed. Um, yeah, I mean, when we talk about climate change, one thing that we often miss is that in the discourse is about the historical responsibility for climate change, the impact on global south nations, and colonialism. And we don't talk about those things because they have very uncomfortable truths. And those truths is that often that the, the resolutions that those so-called leaders are, are, are talking about in COP26 are really irrelevant. Because the majority of climate change is caused by the West. The majority of climate change is caused by historical impact and the continued neo-colonialism of the global south. Most studies say about 80 to 90 percent of the historical impact of climate change comes from the west. In the first two weeks of a year, the average Britain will emit more carbon emissions than the average per capita of the countries of Rwanda, uh, uh, Malawi, Uganda, Guinea, Burkina Faso and Mozambique in the first two weeks. So when we talk about climate change, if we're not talking about what's going on and what we do and how it impacts the global south and how it impacts climate refugees, then we're not talking about climate change. We're talking about vanity politics. We're talking about a way to get into power to save your seat and to start looking very woke and very intelligent. What we're really talking about, when we want to talk about the real issues, we have to start talking about our historical impact and how it's led to civil wars in Sudan because of scarcity of resources and long live the revolution in Sudan as well. We have to talk about when we invade places like Iraq. Why we invaded Iraq? Because we're going for fossil fuels. Because why are we in Afghanistan? Why are we fighting proxy wars in the DRC? Why are we, why are we in debt and trapping countries all over the global south? Why are we doing these things? And what is happening to those nations? 70% of climate change is caused by electric corporations. And the debt entrapment is not spoken about enough. We entrap African countries into debt. And it leads them, like Senegal is an example people often use, to go into unsustainable agricultural uh, methods. And then that leads to displacement of their own people and then internal displacement and women ending up in refugee camps and being more at risk of gender-based violence. It links to every single issue and it starts from here. It starts from here. So when we talk about climate refugees, we have to understand this as well. There's no action that will work unless it's radical action. There is no definition of climate refugee within the law. The Refugee Convention, whatever, whatever human rights instrument you want to talk about, does not fit climate refugees in. So if we're talking about climate refugees, we've got to talk about changing the system overall, overhauling the whole thing. We have to start talking about climate reparations. We have to start being anti-war. 5% of global emissions comes from where? The US Pentagon. 5% of global emissions. And the, and the military industrial complex. We cause more climate emissions in this country, our foreign, our military and our foreign policy cause more climate emissions than 48 countries. So I'm fed up with people talking about climate change as if it's something that's just arrived. The floods in Bangladesh, the, the droughts and the, and the, the extinction level worthiness of, of, of Yemen, that we fund Saudi Arabia to bomb. It's all happening and it's all creating climate impacts and degradation. So when, and when asylum seekers do come here, they're faced with hostile environment, they're faced by Priti Patel and the Conservative government, and before that they're faced by the Labour government, all willing to just put them on the street and forget about them. Well, they're here because we were there. Every human is worthy of a decent life. Just because we were born here doesn't mean that I have to have a better life than my family in Baghdad. Doesn't mean that everyone in, in Africa, in, in, in Asia, has to live a life of, 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 of pain and depression because we were born here and therefore we should have a better life. This is the logic of the capitalist system. This is the logic of what we're told we must think and we must give charity. Let's not be, let's not be vertical with our charity, right? Let's be horizontal. Solidarity, not charity. Fighting for people's rights is what we need to do. And when I say radical solutions, 
solutions. I mean radical solutions. I mean getting rid of the border system. Getting rid of the home office. Getting rid of the pigs behind me. Getting rid of these people. Because they murder people, right? Getting rid of these people. And fighting for a system, a just system, where people can live and people can actually... Because one thing people always talk about, we talk about all the amazing people that come from the West. Let me tell you, there's probably a thousand Einsteins that died in sweatshops in Bangladesh, in India, in the, in the world, in the global south worldwide. And last, I'll finish on this. People often talk about refugees and they say there are too many people coming here and we need to, you know, we need to close the borders and all that rubbish. But not only is that racist and pathetic, but only 1% of refugees around the world will ever, ever land in Britain. 1%. But it's very telling that those people and the racists and the government are more concerned about that 1% than the 1% that holds 50% of our wealth. The 1% that benefits from our suffering. The 1% that laugh at us when we come to protest and make they, start, they sit in the ivory towers and they think nothing's going to happen. Well, let's start showing them things will happen. Let's start saying if they don't allocate resources more justly, we're going to take the resources. We don't want a seat at their table, we'll take the whole table. <laughs> so get involved in organisations, start, start at, being active. Because once you're active, once you start seeing the world as it is, you soon will realise that it's us against them. And be on our side because we'll win one day. Thank you very much. <laughs>